Hello YouTube, dudes and dudettes. This is Robin, your friendly neighborhood audio engineer. Um, for some reason, my uh, uh, program that I use for uh, capturing all of this is not registering the fact that I actually have a camera mounted on my computer, so you won't be able to see my sultry face, but I'm sure um, we're all actually better off for it. I promised a quick introduction to Pro Tools 9, very basics, uh, just to be able to set up a session to show sort of how you go about setting up a session and uh, starting a basic recording. So nothing fancy, nothing very in-depth, um, and I'm just going to be winging it. So anyway, when you start up Pro Tools, you're going to get this window, and we're going to jump on over to create a blank session. You can also create from templates, uh, which can be fun to play around with. I haven't really. But um, as you can see, if you're working with an 11 rack, they have some presets for that. Um, some guitar presets, I actually looked in on one of these with a mate of mine. It basically gives you some uh, quick instrument tracks, uh, which I'll get back to uh, later in the video, uh, with like some drums, uh, just a basic drum riff, and then some tracks for a click and for a fallback system and all that jazz. Um, but we're not going to be using any presets, we're just going to open a basic uh, blank session. You're going to have to choose your file type. Um, you have a choice between AIFF or Broadcast WAV file. Uh, the differences between these, they're both sort of the same as the .wav, uh, the Broadcast WAV file is, is .wav, and a AIFF is sort of the uh, Mac equivalent of a WAV, but they are read in the same way. Um, broadcast wave file is best for when you're, you know, doing sound to film and stuff like that for broadcast because of the way that it sort of implements uh, time code. Not that that really has got anything to do with what we're going to be talking to you about today. Uh, then you want to select your sample rate. Um, depending, this this will change the options you have depending on what interface you're working on. Right now I'm running uh, Pro Tools 9 natively, so uh, we can have a choice up to 96 kilohertz with the built-in input of the uh, MacBook Pro that I'm sitting on. But uh, I'm just going to go for 44.1 kilohertz right now, as that's fairly standard for music and really you, you don't need um, for a basic recording any higher than that. It will basically dictate the highest frequency that you are able to capture, uh, in this case, 22 um, kilohertz will be the highest frequency that uh, your digital converter will be able to represent. Um, and of course, you know, the human hearing goes from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, so that fills up the needs for what you want. Uh, I, I.O. settings, again, you have uh, a certain um, list of different presets depending on what kind of setup you have. If you have an icon, or if you have, you know, a C24, or Control 24, or if you're working off an 11 rack, you can choose these, and it'll automatically set your in and outputs um, to fit that. I'm just going to use last use. Uh, you can also just use stereo mix, which basically defaults everything to your one and two out, your stereo out, and then of course you have the bit depth, which uh, has to do with dynamics, uh, how low your noise floor is, and again, you don't really have to know. Um, in depth what all of these mean, but, but this this is a basic 24-bit, 44.1 kilohertz uh, is, is sort of a good way to start. So we're just going to hit OK, and uh, Pro Tools will then ask you to save your session. Before you do anything, it's not like Logic, where you can open the session and, um, uh, and then start messing about, and it only asks you to save once you start uh, record enabling tracks. So what should we call this? YouTube session. Yes. Save that to the desktop. And then we jump straight in here to the, uh, what does Pro Tools call this? Window. The edit window here. Uh, there are two main windows in Pro Tools, the edit window, and also if you do command equals, uh, there we go. You get to the mix window. Um, both of these have certain 
you know, uh, uses. I'm going to go back to the edit window and we're going to create a track. And the shortcut for this is Command Shift N. Now, uh, before you start doing anything, of course, you want to have a track going. So you can now choose whether you want um, the number of tracks you want, if it's a mono stereo track, or in what kind of track it is. We're, of course, going to start with an audio track because we want to be doing some recording. A handy little thing to note, if you control N again, you can get another one. So if you want to, on the fly, create multiple types of tracks, let's say we want, for this instance, um, we are going to want, say, eight mono audio tracks and then maybe two stereo audio tracks for some reason. And uh, we want some instruments in there, so we're going to create three stereo instrument tracks, and then one master fader. So we can create those, and as you see, they jump up in this menu uh, here. Um, this is it's just a timeline-based program, as of most uh, audio applications, and in here will all the all the regions. Um, for uh, uh, the audio or in these tracks the MIDI that we might be working with. If we now jump over to the mix window you can see that each track has got a de dedicated track with dedicated fader and also uh, space for inserts, sends, uh, etc. Everything of course going to the master fader. Let's go. Ah, I made this a mono master fader, which is completely useless. So let's delete that. Master fader is not really that important to have unless you want to put uh, effects and processing on the master bus or where everything is going to go. But for the purpose of this exercise, we're just going to look at how to set up basic recording. So you've got your tracks. And you've got your imp inputs from your uh, audio interface that you're using. And uh, as you can see here, for any track to be able to record, you have to record arm it. Aha! Now you can hear a double of what I'm saying because, uh, of course, the input is the built in microphone that we're using, which is, of course, um, <laughs> the microphone on my computer. So uh, we are. Ooh, we are uh, going to just going to show you quickly how to record and uh, do a quick pass um, just to show how this works. We, now that we've recorded on this track, there are a couple uh, shortcuts for recording which are handy to know. The first one is uh, Command Space if you're on a Mac. Command Space. You hit Command Space and absolutely nothing happens. That's fascinating. Uh, hmm. That usually works. Uh, you also have F12. If you hit F12, you start recording, as you can see here. So, la da 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 da, we're recording, etc., etc., etc. And you hit space, and now you can actually hear uh, back what we were, uh, what we just recorded by hitting space again. If you hit F12, you start recording, as you can see here. So, la da 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 da, we're recording, etc., etc., etc. Magical. The other recording button, if you have a, uh, a keyboard with a numpad, if you hit 3, that will also record. Uh, that's the one that I usually use for recording. Um, and uh, just to point out, Pro Tools, uh, if you hit 3 uh, on the number of keys above your keyboard, it won't actually do anything. And uh, 3 does not stop recording. I believe F12... No. Same with F12. Okay, so you've just recorded your um, uh, your region. Um, things like volume can be controlled in here. So if you turn it down, you can't hear any of the uh, of me talking through Pro Tools, and you turn it up, and then you can hear me talking. You also have a panning, which uh, actually just decides the amount. Uh, of the signal which is being sent to either one channel, output one, or output two. So if you move it just to be sent to output, whoa, move it just to be sent to output one, it goes left, 
and just output 2, it goes 3, and then of course you can do anything in the middle to uh, decide where you want this audio to be coming from. Um, back to the edit window, we can look quickly. This is basically what you need to know to start recording. Uh, there is a built-in metronome as well, uh, which can be handy, and that's you get that by finding the transport bar, which the shortcut for one, that is command one. So you can bring up the transport, and down here you have a metronome. Um, the interesting thing about Pro Tools is there is the metronome isn't built in by itself. You actually have to go in on a channel and then hit the insert and then insert whoa -ho -ho. ah I believe it is an instrument there's an instrument called click uh, which you actually have to insert into the channel and then you get a metronome where you can change the volume of the accented and unaccented notes to your liking. Uh, a lot of people dislike the click, so we can go to an instrument track, which are these orange ones, uh, and uh, let's plug in just a basic instrument. Uh, I'm just going to go for Boom right now, uh, which is native, comes with Pro Tools, and it's an alright little uh, drum machine. I won't go in depth into this, but because you do have this uh, uh, this uh, plugin, you can create your own uh, metronome that sounds that might just sound a little bit better. So if that you know feels better for the musician or anything, uh, what I actually like to do is, um, uh, if especially if I'm recording drums, just get uh, the drummer to uh, hit the closed hi hat, and then you can go. Um, let's just quickly uh, demonstrate this with a clap. That, that peaked the input horribly, so it's probably going to sound awful. Uh, but we can zoom in and um, just uh, uh, move this over, and drag it in like so, and then you can swap to grid mode, which will actually lock uh, your uh, uh, selection to the grid, and then Command D for duplicate bring that through. So you can do that. Um, just anything just to, to make it sound natural. And of course with multi-track audio you just select another track that you want to work with and sing into a metronome. Yeah! Cool! So that's uh, basically how you record a track. Uh, and. Uh, Go out there, make some music, and um, have some fun, y'all. Catch you later.